When people tell me that the Russians interfered with U.S. elections, I laugh. I tell them that they don't have time for that. They are instead ruining people's gaming experiences online in games such as League of Legends, Teamfight Tactics, Dota, and many, many other games. If you are having trouble getting a higher video game rank, if you are hard stuck, this may or may not apply to you, but let's take a look at the story right here. This person is being harassed by Russian security services online. This has also included all kinds of hacks like modifying the RNG of games, making sure I get so-called Russia trolls in the games I play. I'm just wondering if it's possible to somehow demonstrate using the TT tool, that's like the tactics.tools website, that this must be going on when I'm trying to play the game. So for an example, he links his little profile thing and Tactics Tools has this like fun thing where you can look at characteristics of your TFT play. These things aren't really meant to actually say like whether you're really good at that comp or something or good at econ or good at flexibility. It just shows like trends in your play patterns. Um, no one actually takes these seriously. They're mainly there just for fun. So he shows his little thing and he has an F in items and he's like, I think I'm getting rather unfair dice in that I almost always get components which are the worst possible components for my chosen lineup. I think that's related to this harassment as well. I'm not sure if this graph is enough to substantiate it, but it kind of stands out. On the other hand, here's my win-loss graph. Although it's just 50 games, but this should, given a larger sample size, just about follow a normal distribution. TFT is not supposed to follow a normal distribution on your placements. If anything, if we have equally skilled players playing against each other, all the time, you'd actually have no curve at all and it'd just be completely horizontal. You'd get first the same amount of times you get second, seventh, uh, and all the other types of uh, placements. For some reason, this guy thinks it should be a normal distribution, but again, it is not supposed to at all, so I don't know what he's talking about there. But he said, here it's kind of normal, except there's an unusual peak at seventh and eighth place, which I think is due to some of the games, including Russia Trolls, who are actively trying to make me lose, so this is probably not enough material to work with. But well, I already know I get harassed by the Russians. I receive literal threats and harassments in person, and this kind of thing has happened in pretty much every game I've tried to play. So I basically can kind of approach this question by asking myself, given I already know this is taking place, then how do I prove it using something like this data? For example, I've had people tell me that you should be careful in the traffic not to get into an accident, and a Russian guy even said, we are going to kill you once. He's also contacted the police about this, but since it's the Russians and this is Finland, they're not going to be able to do anything about it. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just trying to mind my own business and spend time playing games online. But I get this kind of targeted trolling and harassment, which involves some hackery. Like I pretty much the worst possible rating on items in this game, but I'm sure I could teach most people who are well rated how to choose items which is a bit odd if you have the worst possible rating in items. Then the owner of the site responds to him, items in TFT aren't given to you by random, you get components and then you choose how to combine them. Also the ratings take into account how well your items fit your units and comps, so you always can or should adjust your comp you're going for based on the components you get. Also, if you guys didn't know, uh, the items that you get in game, it's kind of pseudo random. You pretty much get a bag of items at the start of every game and you get I believe it's two or three copies of every single one and then after every stage that bag of items that you get items from from the neutral rounds get one more copy of each component every single stage so essentially in stage two they add one more copy of every item and then again in stage three and then stage four so essentially what that means is if you've received one copy of let's say you got two tiers at the start of the game that means you are less likely to get tiers later in the game Note that your picks in Carousel do not affect the item bags. It is literally only the items that drop from the neutral camps. Um, so it isn't actually random. So a lot of high ELO players do abuse that fact and use it to their advantage. Um, so let's go back. So the guy is saying again, also the numbers that display damage are rigged somehow. There's a certain methodology to it that's kind of tricky to explain. But for example, now I played a game and ended up first, but it was still rigged in a way that I've had trolls to play with. But for the argument that the rating takes into account the items, how does it decide then what score to give? And then he links one of his games. He's playing the Syndicate Assassin comp. He's got Warmogs on his Shaco. He's got Jeweled Gauntlets on his Akali. He's got Assassin Spatula on Braum. Uh, okay, let's take a look at what he wants to ask. Like, for example, what kind of score would one get with these items? For example, it's kind of bad because I have two Ionic Sparks and I have Assassin Emblem on Braum. And Darius has a chainmail piece. He also, I just realized, he also has a glove on Akali and then a chainmail on Darius, so he could have completed an item. 
Uh, but practically there was like zero choices I could have improved because I got the rod for Brom from the carousel. So I could have sold Brom to free up the staff, but then I would have lost the syndicate five bonus temporarily. Also, the lineup ended up having seven syndicates, six assassin and two bodyguard. So right off the bat, the fact that he doubts that Ionic Spark is usable on Braum is already questionable. Uh, maybe it's not the best item on Braum. Maybe you'd rather have Ionic Spark on a Kali. But if you have Ionic Spark on your Braum, it's not like you're complaining about it, you know? Um, so then he goes on to say, well, I might ha have wanted to put Warmogs on a Kali instead of Guardian Angel, but I itemized Shaco first. Like, I don't think I could have made a single decision that would somehow have been better. Once Braum already had needlessly large rod, the choice was either sell the hero or make something that's useful, and the most useful thing, according to my judgment, was Ionic Spark. And even if Darius already had one on, so would I get an F rating from playing like this then? I'm also trying to question the validity of the tool under normal circumstances, but I just don't know how it works, and with regards to this whole Russian problem, it would be nice if I could understand how it works a bit better. So the site owner responds, I don't know exactly how I would rate it, but it looks like a solid F tier itemization for me. The way it works is basically you go to their team comps page and click on comps for unit plus item combos. And the more of the higher tier items you get, the better your score. Then it compares you versus the quality of itemization people have at similar rank with that comp. So then the guy responds, some of the top tier item compositions are incorrect though. For example, Titan's Resolve on Cho'Gath is bad unless you've got some reason to gain attack damage. You would rather do Bramble, Dragon Claw, and for a third item, Hextech, Gunblade, Blue Buff, Sunfire, or possibly Redemption. Gargoyle Stoneplate is also logical, but a bit inefficient. Other reasons to include things like having a hero with a Zeke's Herald, Clockwork, or some emblem that gains attack speed. So, another questionable thing. He thinks that Hextech Gunblade is really good on Cho'Gath. It is probably not that great. Blue Buff, also not great on Cho'Gath because he has so much mana that Blue Buff's not going to help him get additional casts off. And then Sunfire Cape, that one's pretty good on Cho'Gath, I'd say. It's definitely, I wouldn't say it's like the best item, but it's definitely pretty good. And then Redemption, of course, is pretty good as well. It is a little trickier than just saying random things are good on Cho'Gath. Of course, you have to always play based on what's in your lobby. Next up, Titan's Resolve is very good on Cho'Gath. On that particular patch, people were playing like attack damage Cho'Gath, so Titan's was good there. Titan's gives both armor and magic resist and AP and AD, which is all useful stats for Cho'Gath. Um, depending on what your mutant trait was, of course. And he goes on to say, this is bad. Well, at least it's not Warmox, heh heh heh, as if Warmox is so bad on Cho'Gath. Newsflash, it's actually not bad on Cho'Gath, especially in the early game. Um, but Blue Buff is not the best combat item for Cho'Gath, though. But the thing is, you need to build up the HP stacks. On the other hand, if you do get a Blue Buff, you might better place it on Malzahar, for example. These kinds of things involve this kind of principle called linear optimization. No clue what that means, let's see if he explains. Basically, you have a product of something like lifetime times damage times attack speed times crit, where lifetime is another function of health right now. Effective health versus effective damage. So he actually kind of has some, like, brain, you know? He's not like some idiot who's just, like, blabbering on about stuff. Um, a lot of ways that people have been approaching itemization is doing some sort of multiplicative formula rather than additive formulas. For example, you don't want to just stack all attack speed on your carry. You want to mix it with like attack speed, critical strike chance, and like attack damage to get the most effect from the item. And the reason why this leads to more damage is because uh, you multiply each effect rather than just adding one stack in particular. And we all know multiplication outscales addition after a certain point. So then he says, well, I can't say it's bad to have those three items because idea is correct, but it's not the best possible set of items either. Like at least it's not Zeke's Herald or and Deathblade. So if you manage to build HP for Cho'Gath, then of course you don't want something like Warmog's Armor, for example, because it's just geometrically inefficient to increase your health from 6 to 7k. Whereas if you take a Dragon Claw, it's generally better. I'd probably say those two items are like pretty close to each other, but you also have to remember Warmog's gets like a health buff from Cho'Gath. And every kill he gets, I believe you get like a 2% stack on whatever health you have. So Warmog's is actually not as bad as it sounds, even though his logic is correct. If you have a lot of health, you probably don't want more of it. You'd rather have stuff like armor or magic resistance. Um, but that doesn't mean that Warmogs is automatically bad on Cho'Gath because there are other things that increase the effects of the Warmogs, such as maybe like you have a protector spat on him or you just have a lot of stacks on him that he gets too much HP. So moving on, he goes on with this explanation that I pretty much just laid out. And he says, thus, it makes healing logical as well. 
um, like Redemption, yes, Redemption's very good. Um, but then that healing might not be worth it, but Redemption and Hextech also heal other units, so it makes sense. But anyways, let's look at these other so-called top-tier itemizations, although I'm not sure most of them are correct. And I don't know why he's so gung-ho about Hextech Gunblade on Cho'Gath, because it's really not that good. Um, I wouldn't say it's, like, horrible, but, like, you'd rather have other tank items on him, you know? <laughs> uh, but let's look at the next game. He is saying, like, for example, I think this is probably good. I haven't played it, but at the same time, it's not telling you how you have to use a teardrop or how to use a rod. So as a plan, it's like, I'm going to miss these components entirely and hope I get a bunch of these I had in mind instead. Um, essentially, what he's saying is, like, there's no tier items listed in this comp, so it's like, what am I supposed to build? Well, in those situations, you're not forced to go for challengers, for example. You're also able to use tiers for wind streaking, such as building, like, a static shiv, or building, like, a tank item, like a redemption, or uh, just literally any item, and just use it for something else. You don't need perfect items every game. These are just random recommendations from, like, some sort of algorithm. Next build, he shows the Syndicate Shaco and a Kali build, and he says, so if you compare to this plan... This doesn't have that defect. It's saying you can use the cloak on Katarina, swords and crossbows on Shaco and Akali, teardrop on Akali, and belts on Braum. Even glove and gauntlet is on Akali. And although it's kind of weird to have IE and no jeweled gauntlet on Akali, but anyways, makes sense. So this is another time where he is wrong. Infinity Edge is incredible on Akali. Jeweled gauntlet, pretty bad on Akali because jeweled gauntlet makes your spells critically strike. But as an assassin, Akali already gets that, and that just makes the entire thing of having Jeweled Gauntlet irrelevant and makes Infinity Edge extremely, extremely good. Infinity Edge is pretty much the best item on any assassin, unless there's some really, really weird specific circumstance in terms of damage. Um, so already right from that, you could already tell he's not really like that high level of a player. I wish I knew what rank he was, but maybe we could find out later. Um, so it's like the plan on this build that you have a bunch of assassins, unlock the syndicate buff, and you have two bodyguards, blah, blah, blah. Um, but that's mostly because I got lucky, got the bonuses for assassin drops, and the Akali IE pick is slightly questionable, though. Next, he's going to look at a Kog'Maw and Garen composition, and he says, this one's a little trickier to assess. I don't know, it looks weird, I'm just going to take a break. Whether you put the Warmog on an assassin or on a bodyguard is a bit tricky since a bodyguard's purpose is to engage the opponents and buy time for the assassins to take out the enemy. So if you consider the hit points, you'd rather put them on assassins directly, but because the bodyguards get extra armor, they gain more effective HP from the warmogs. I'm really surprised how he knows what effective HP is, but then he rather puts his warmogs on his shako rather than his tanks. Really doesn't make sense to me. At this point, I can't actually tell if he's trolling, or if he's actually being serious. Because if he was trolling, most trolls do not go through this much effort to do it because I'm telling you guys, we're only halfway through the story. So he's writing up like literally a 10 page essay that's due tomorrow. Um, so because if you jump in with the assassins and engage an opponent before your bodyguards do, it's going to suck. So I opted for putting the war mugs on Shaco who made good use of it though. Also here we have Infinity Edge on Talon which is just dumb, isn't his bleed spell damage? That doesn't work with IE, or is this some exception with Talon? But okay, let's call it top tier shrug. So dude, you have no clue what you're talking about and saying you're good at items. Assassin trait makes all their abilities crit. IE is top tier on all assassins. JG is garbage on all assassins. Assassins never get targeted first. You don't want to use tank items on them. Those stuff like Gunblade, Hodge, BTGA can be good at times. Uh, Titan's Resolve is good on Cho because it gives AP, which gives more damage and more stacks. Also generally makes good use of Bow, which that comp can struggle to use if you're not running a Kog'Maw carry. TLDR, stop blaming everything on random nonsense and learn to play. Now the guy responds, there's certainly stuff to learn, but it's not random nonsense. But that's actually what has been taking place. However, I didn't know that Assassins can crit on all spells, which is a pretty important piece of missing information. He's willing to learn, you know, I actually like that about this guy. And the fact that I didn't know this piece of information doesn't mean that no trolling has been taking place, for it certainly has been taking place. Okay, I, I gave him props too early. I've literally received death threats and informed the police about them, as already mentioned, and I've been trolled in other games constantly, so I'm not exactly an expert on TFT yet, but it's entirely reasonable to assume that if such trolling has taken place elsewhere, it would take place on TFT as well, and it has to. Also, the point about Titan's Resolve on Cho is it's only 50 points of ability power and 50 points of attack damage. 
is less useful, although it gives 25 magic resist and 25 armor, but only after the stacks have been accumulated. TLDR, it's not random nonsense, although I admit I didn't know everything about TFT yet. So even though I do put this newly acquired bit of information among the stuff I've already learned about TFT, that will not make any trolling stop. So 50 ability power and 50 attack damage is actually quite a bit. If you look at Rabadon's death cap, for example, it gives 75 AP, and that's like the most stacked ability power item. Titan's Resolve gives 50 plus all the other bonuses. I'd say it's a pretty decent trade-off, you know? So then the guy responds, 50 AP is 50% more damage on ability, which is quite decent for a single item, especially when it gives defensive stats as well. Anyways, we learned that there was quite a good reason it wasn't your rating, your itemization well. Uh, good luck, have fun in your games. I think he's actually saying like, <laughs> obviously it's like pretty evident why his itemization was an F. I actually didn't know that AP worked that 50 AP gives 50% more damage. I think that's why we have like some of the diminishing returns, like the first 50% of AP gives 50%, but then the next 50 um, doesn't give as much. I think the second 50%, um, let's say you get like 100 total, um, only adds 33% more after the first 50%. So now the guy responds, I'm not quite sold on this conclusion that you learned, but I did regard, despite this comment, Titan's Resolve is one of the better items on Trogath anyways, just not the best possible item. But this illustrates a particular problem about this trolling, which is that it's difficult to prove. So if it is happening, I guess it would be difficult to prove, right? But I think his trolling does not have to do with his items because items is actually something you can control based on what the other guy was saying in the last comment where it's like you could choose like where to put your items or something like that. But like I got these Russian trolls when I was playing Dota 2, but I actually stuck with the game for like 3000 matches despite getting these trolls. And it's precisely because I wanted to avoid the situation that you could just shrug off the whole thing based on that. I wouldn't know what I was talking about. So for example, if I go play Valorant or something, which I've not played before, and I played for a week or so, there's going to be some Russian trolls in there. However, I won't be in a position to comfortably demonstrate that there's going to be Russia trolls in the game after having played only one week of it. So I'm not sure if you understand what the problem with your attitude is. You're expecting me to be like top level player before you could find it conceivable that I was getting some kind of trolling in there. Like I also recently started playing League of Legends recently and I get Russia trolls in it too. But I'm clearly a beginner in LoL, so I can't just say that I'm losing because there are trolls in the game. There's a whole ton of stuff I still don't know about. But does that mean if it's taking place, then I can't make such a claim, even if it's true? So it's the same situation in TFT. I've played it quite a bit already, but not like forever. I get Russia trolling in TFT as well, but to understand this better, then you'd need to know about how the Russians do things. That is a lot to digest. I guess like if it's actually is happening, like how do you prove it? I'm not really too sure. <laughs> um, so well, if you're gonna act very smart and say how all the builds are wrong, you better know something to back it up. Otherwise it's fine to be humble. Oh yeah, that's another point. Like this guy's acting like he knows a lot about TFT, but the fact that you don't know that assassins don't crit uh, means you probably don't know a lot about a lot of the game because most people who are, I'd say like, Gold and above probably know that, and I'm sure like a lot of silver players know that info also. But if you didn't, no worries, like now you know. Um, there's nothing wrong with not knowing something. I don't know like a lot of stuff about TFT either, but I don't pretend that I do, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, well, I certainly did know something. The error in this case was not the application of reasoning, but that I had one missing faulty premise I was working with. For example, Jeweled Gauntlet is clearly pointless on assassins and IE makes a lot of sense. If you toggle this assassin can crit on abilities piece of information on. So just for reference, I'll explain what happened in Dota 2 so you can understand the background of this a little better. So just FYI guys, like the crit thing on assassins, it isn't like a hidden thing. It isn't something that like only certain people knows. It's literally in the tooltip for assassins. So if you just read everything, you'd find out about it. Um, so anyways, I see you're the type of person who thinks highly of himself and wants to blame everything but himself for anything that goes wrong. Uh, then he responds in September 2020, I bought myself a new computer and decided I could waste time playing online games. You don't need to provide me more evidence of that. So he goes on one final rant here. Uh, I would find that to be an erroneous conclusion, but you can of course be arrogant yourself if you want to in any case. So I did stumble on Dota 2, and this was in a situation where I was already in trouble with the Russians, but I wasn't playing an online game where they could troll me on top of everything else that had happened. So in the beginning, everything went kind of normally after finishing the trial period or so. 
I was rated around 500 points or so. So Dota 2 has this rating system where if you have 10 points minimum possible rating, which is like 0.4% of the player base or something like that, and a maximum doesn't exist, but basically to be at the very top would require like 8,000 to 10,000 points of like the entire player base. So after playing it a couple of weeks, I started getting some Russian trolls in my games and they started losing games on purpose, like doing stuff that happens in Dota 2 normally too, like there's someone feeding, someone being a troll, etc. But it also has this special Russia flavor to it with kind of cues to let me know on a personal level that they're doing this to mess with me. This resulted to that I got the absolute maximum rating of 10 points shortly after that. However, I then spent 3,000 games playing the game and I pretty much learned everything there was to learn about the game, unlike TFT, which I played considerably less. And after playing the game for 3,000 games, I had 10 MMR points. And the last game I played, I had nine Russia trolls in it, four in my team, five in the opposing team, and my teammates lost on purpose. And there was nothing I could have done basically. And so I still have the absolute minimum possible rating of 10 points. And now it's impossible for someone to have that kind of rating. You know, there's a distribution, even if there's 0.4% of people with the minimum rating with a player base of 1 million or whatever, that's going to be quite a few players. However, most of these players in turn are new players. So like I'm sort of new in TFT. Oh, I thought you were very experienced in it. Um, and if they stick with the game, they're not going to have 10 MMR points for like more than 200 games or something. But I did have it for 3000 games. And I also got behaviors which were obviously related to this harassment from the people who are doing the trolling. So now if I go to play that game, it's much easier to tell exactly how someone is trolling and losing on purpose. So it's not like in TFT that, oh, maybe there's this whole bunch of stuff I didn't know about. And even then, there's still this trolling that's taking place in TFT, which you're not believing, meaning that you've actually arrived at the incorrect conclusion, but you just don't know it yet. So if by comparison, I did spend 3000 games playing TFT, there is nothing left to learn about this. And I was still getting this problem. I would be more justified in my confidence in the context of TFT alone. But since I already know this is taking place for various other contexts, you're mistakenly thinking that I'm just going to blame others for my own shortcomings by being confident about that. Whereas this confidence is instead based on prior experience, which over time has accumulated more evidence than I needed to know what's going on. Anyways, I'm going to go sleep now. You can adjust your position on that if you want to, but I wouldn't expect it from someone like you. Uh, someone tries to reason with him. You guys can go ahead and read this on your own time. Pretty much he's saying it's like, yeah, trolls can happen, uh, but you can't be getting them every single game. Uh, some of the items, it's like you can do different things with different items based on your stars to adjust for the end game. Um, you could also build like secondary good items. You don't have to build the best in slots every time. And it's also fine to be good at Dota and stuff like that in TFT, but like pretty much he's saying that like it's time to start theory crafting new stuff on the basis that he doesn't know everything and has learned new information. So he's being pretty positive, kind of like egging him on to like just become a better player. And then this guy responds, that's not really the issue here. I get this trolling everywhere, including in person and about your claim that I can't be getting trolls every game. I definitely can be getting trolls in every game. Everything else is a bit beside the point anyways. I'll learn this game if I play it enough, but that doesn't really solve the issue at hand, which you're conveniently ignoring. That was a lot to digest. Um, one fun game we could play is like, have like a writing prompt of like, what would you do if you were actually legitimately being trolled every single game by some uh, foreign country to you that had a bunch of like security services or whatever it was called in the beginning that we're trying to troll all your online games. How would you go about proving that? I'm not really too sure. All I know is that this guy's F itemization was pretty justified. And um, yeah, I hope I didn't take too much of your time there. I found these pretty funny, even though this one went on a little long. Again, if you guys enjoyed this type of content, do let me know down in the comments below. Hit the like button and also like send me texts of stuff you want me to react to on any social media platform, Twitter, Instagram, Discord, email, or whatever. And if you guys didn't like this, also let me know too as well so I don't waste my time doing this. And yeah, that is it for me. I'll see you all later.